So, you want a solo hard will. Well, you've come to the right place. And unfortunately, this boss fight is absolutely mandatory. Like, it's literally not optional. That is, if you want to liberate in Maple Story in order to get your Genesis weapon, you have to solo hard will or do it with another person on the same quest as you during liberation, and they receive a 50% final damage penalty and you guys take extra 10% damage. So that is the liberation version of the quest. But if you want to solo hard will, another reason you could do it is you could get this medal. Once you solo hard will, if you kill hard will with the party with or without, you get this medal regardless. And you also get the chance to get this cursed yellow spell book. There's different colors of it, and it gives you, it's it's the best in slot pocket item. So in a reboot, this is pretty damn good. And reg server too. I mean, you could just buy it in reg server. You don't really have to solo hard will. But in reboot, you need this because it's best in slot, and it's a pitch boss item. But uh, other than that, he also drops this little Spider-Man node, and um, that brings me to the point where you cannot use this skill against him because, you know, it's not it's not your skill, it's his skill, so you get the skill after you kill him in the lore. So, first of all, if you're gonna solo hard will, you're gonna have to take off true arachnid reflection. This is his skill, you can't use it. You can't be taking his shit, come on. Man, you can't use his own skills against him. So yeah, take it off, it won't let you use it. If you try to use it in the fight, it'll be like, hey man, you can't use that because fuck you, this is my skill. So don't use this. Now, another thing that you do want to take during Will is Will of Urda, because this actually helps you in part three. We'll explain later. But you want Will of Urda if you can possibly fit it into your nodes. If not, then that's fine. So you do want to take Urda Nova. This is a bind, obviously. Um, it helps in part one, part two, and part three. Will has three parts, and you really just want to take this because he does bind himself. So there's a little segment of Will where he does like a test, and after you complete the test successfully without dying, you get to attack him for free, and he binds himself for about 10 seconds. And then after he binds himself, you can bind him again. So that is like pretty massive, because you know, Urda Nova binds for 10 seconds, it says right there. Bind duration 10 seconds, so you can double bind it basically. So I would say this is mandatory. Urda Nova is very fucking good in Will. Um, if you don't take it, then that means you probably have a class bind. If your class does not have a bind, you absolutely need to take this. It doesn't have to be max, just get level 1 if you want, but it, you know, max is a little bit better because I think it reduces the cooldown, but that's it. So yeah, you want to take Will of Urda, you want to take Urda Nova. Um, you don't really need Rope Lift, um, and then you obviously can't use True Arachnid Reflection, which you get from the Mirror World Node Stone. And um, the last thing you would want to take is actually, you would definitely want to have... Um, where is it? You want Fatal Strike 1. This increases damage by 100% for 2 seconds when attacking. This really helps during bossing, and it also helps with Culvert and GPQ, but it's a just overall damage boost in general. And trust me, this boss fight is actually hell, so you really just want to be dishing as, out as much damage as you possibly can. So please make this and just, you know, go to the node crafting and craft it. And then you want to put that bad boy. And it's, it's going to always be in special nodes. See, I made another one. This one expired. Disassemble that. Get 50 node shards. Boom. Bada boom. Bada bang. And we put Fatal Strike right here. And what it does is just, obviously, just... See that little V on top of my head? That gives me a little bit of damage boost. Damage plus 100. It is really useful in any boss fight. I actually recommend this for every single boss fight. Black Mage, anything. Just take it, for the love of God. So another thing that you need for Will is you actually want to have a full page of healing familiars. Now I'm not going to go too in depth with this because familiars are a whole lot of explanation. I'm assuming if you are soloing hard will or trying to solo hard will, you probably you know know about familiars in the reboot or reg server. Um, reboot you have to farm them yourself. So basically you can find these familiars and make sure you have three large healing familiars. Um, you can use small, but it doesn't heal as much, so you, what it says, continually restores a large amount of HP, continually restores a large amount of HP, continually restores a large amount of HP, you want three of these. This is for part two of Will, because part two of Will, he blocks your healing unless you use the Moonlight mechanic, which I will explain later. But before you go in, please make sure you have three large healing familiars, it is pretty much mandatory unless you're somehow a god at dodging, like, these mini bullet hells um, that he does in Will, but, um... Yeah, seriously take this. You can heal in part 1 and part 3, you just can't heal in part 2. So, you want to be summoning this. And you do want to keybind your summon familiars, make sure you have this keybinded. And you can even keybind this familiar essence to charge the familiars. Because if I summon it, for example, it'll be right here. It's not fully charged, you see the 1500. 
make sure you charge it by just pressing whatever button this is key binded to and it'll charge 2000 which gives you like the maximum amount of time but yeah you really just want to have healing familiars and if you want you can have your original bossing familiars if you have bossing familiars in a reboot that's great you will deal more damage obviously um just make sure you click that click the preset and then save it and then yeah and the last thing that I highly recommend is, I think honestly, ring swapping in Will is pretty damn good. It gives you a lot of damage, especially if you are a burst class, such as Night Lord or, I don't know, Dual Blade or, I don't know, I'm just thinking of like the class that I play. But yeah, seriously, if you're like, okay, like Mercedes or something, you're uh, Adele, I think Adele has pretty good bursts. I think if you have your weapon jump um, from doing Oz, then this is a great skill or a great ring to have because what it does is just increases your damage while you equip this ring and you can just swap it out. So I'm going to go ahead and use my ring of uh, weapon jump and then I'm going to... So look, it's going to be like this. I'm going to use final cut and then I'm going to use that. And then, yep, so this lasts for about 13 seconds, weapon jump 4. Uh, make sure you have some rings, um, Oz rings. I made a video about Oz rings on my channel, so if you are unfamiliar, you can use that. You could honestly use four rings in Will. Um, I do that sometimes. I do swap to my regular ring, but you want critical damage four if you can afford it or get it from Oz. Um, this is actually not a good ring. Actually, why did I just say that? Don't use this, but you can use it if you want. It, you know, it's better. Um, obviously, the best ring is Ring of Restraint, but Weapon Jump four is really good. Just make sure you have it in your stats. Uh, but yeah, you can also use four rings. I really just recommend ring swapping during Will because you really just want to be dealing damage to this guy because if you don't kill him instantly, he will fucking ruin your life. So the last thing that you absolutely need for hard will, in my opinion, I promise you, this is the last thing, is that you need to go to your link skills and you need to make a preset with full damage, of course, you know, Angelic Buster, all of that, and you need to make sure that you have Spirit of Freedom. What this does is basically it gives you an iframe every time you die. So if you think you're going to die a lot in Will like me, then, well, this is going to save your ass. You basically get rewarded for being bad and just dying. But, you know, sometimes you do want to die because this gives you an iframe. And if your class does not have an iframe, you basically get a free iframe. So who doesn't want this? And especially in Will Part 2 and Part 3. Part 3, I would say this is pretty much mandatory because you do get webbed out. You will see what I mean by that in the future. So just keep watching. You will see. Upon entry, I'm going to go ahead and just fuck him up and bind him and just beat the shit out of him. That's what you really want to do. If you don't have the damage to do this, then that's fine. I would suggest going down a little bit. Uh, if you're able to solo hard lucid, I would do. I would attempt hard will. So this is an attack. It's gonna. It's not a one hit KO, but it pretty much takes all your health. So we are gonna call this skill the Red Eyeball Tornado of Death. I just made that up on the spot. It does not have an official name. I'm just gonna call it that because it looks like a Red Eyeball Tornado of Death. Bruh. So in order to dodge this skill, you can iframe it. Don't be afraid to iframe it because this deals 90% of your health. So seriously, you do not want to get hit by this in phase one. If you die in phase one, that's pretty bad for the rest of the run. You really do want to conserve your lives. So please do not die in phase one. Practice this as much as possible. So you can iframe this. There's no way you can dodge it by, if you don't have an iframe, you can just shift dimensions. You can jump over it vertically. I don't recommend doing this, but it is possible apparently, according to a couple guides that I've read. But seriously, just uh, either shift your dimension or, you know, just iframe it. Don't be afraid. And in order to avoid this attack in general, you can see that he's going to use the attack by him kind of just adjusting his glasses. He will do the anime glasses thing. You know what I'm talking about if you're a weave. So just be on the lookout if he does close his eyes and just kind of like channels this attack. So we're going to switch to the other dimension. Now you want to beat the shit out of him before he beats the sh- well, he switches dimensions. So you have about a few more seconds to really just fuck- Ooh, uh, he, he does that, he does do that. So let's just pause real quick. So what just happened is that I got reversed. This is an annoying attack in phase one. It won't kill you, but it's just really annoying because you could accidentally walk into a tornado because it reverses your movements. So when you see that green skull on top of your head, that means you got reversed. 
in order to avoid this attack in general, as a rule of thumb, you really just want to keep Will in the middle during phase 1, because you keep him in the middle, you can actually see his attacks, and you keep him in the middle and you stay behind him. If you have a dash, if you're a class that has, you know, like a dash that can immediately go behind him, I recommend you stay behind him, otherwise you can get hit by these things, and that will lead to your death if you walk into tornadoes or you eat all of the spider legs and the little pellets coming out. Alright, so currently what I'm doing is that I'm in the purple dimension. You can see the purple HP bar on the top. It matches this dimension, so I'm attacking the HP bar until it goes all the way down. And then when it's all the way down, you'll be ready for the test, and then he will give you a test. Okay, so I did... Okay, so you see this little eyeball here? Oh, I'm getting reversed. He does reverse you in this mode, or... Yeah, so... Alrighty, so when you see this message, Will is trying to unlock his power, find your way to safety, you see that on the top? That means that you have completed his first segment, you've deleted his HP bar equally, and that means that this test will happen. So you're going to see this red eyeball. If you don't see it, that means that you're in the wrong dimension. If you're in the wrong dimension, you will have a screen crack and you will instantly die unless you iframe it, and you don't want that to happen. So you want to be in the right dimension, and the right dimension has the eyeball. If you don't see the eyeball, you shift to the other dimension. Anyways, so you just attack- when this happens, he shifts you to this dimension, you attack this, you eat the yellow balls, you don't eat the, the red balls, the red balls kill you. If you are a thief, like me, or if you're an explorer thief, you have dark sight, you can just sit in dark sight, these red balls will not hurt you. If you are a class that does not have dark sight, if you get hit by the red balls, you will get fucking destroyed. So right now I'm gonna ring swap, I'm gonna switch to my weapon jump ring, and I'm gonna go ahead and buff up. What's gonna happen is that he's gonna bind himself, because he passed the test. So... I'm just gonna buy or just burst him a little bit. I didn't use my uh, Maple Goddess Blessing, whoopsies, and then we're gonna switch to the other dimension. And then he's going to still be bound, and then what you wanna do is you wanna bind him again. Okay, fuck me, dude. I got, so he, what he does, he switches you to the other dimension, which is not good. You see how in the, the purple dimension, you see the HP bar on the top is purple, right? So you always want to be behind him, because if you're behind him, he won't use that tornado attack on you, and that won't fuck you up, because that literally, like, basically one-shots you, so that's not fun. So yeah, just beat the shit out of him again, and when it gets to a really low HP, you have to meet that uh, threshold. So now, you can just kind of jack off and just chill, so we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna just chill, and then we're gonna swipe. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna swap my ring. Um, okay, so this is the one-hit KO. Uh, it's not actually one-hit KO, it's like 90% HP, but I, I still would like for you guys to dodge it, because dying in part one is pretty bad, because you really just want to conserve your lives, Will, because it's just going to be a fucking pain in the ass. So, yeah. So yeah, there's a lot of things going on in the background. There's the, the pellets. The pellets actually make you... Okay, so what you can do to avoid that attack, you can actually switch dimensions if you like. Make sure you only do this when your uh, your moonlight is more than half. So you see that he's trying to unlock my power. You want to go to the dimension with the red eye. So now that that's a thing, we're going to just hit this thing in the middle. And then we're going to eat the yellow balls. Eat the yellow balls. Don't eat the red balls. Now once you eat like one or two balls, it's enough to create this little yellow piss barrier. Uh, we'll call it uh, umbrella, whatever. Um, this will protect you. This, if you stay inside this, it means that you pass the test. Simple as that. And then it's screen crack. And so when the screen cracks, you wanna just go ahead and just start buffing up. And you wanna beat the shit out of him again. He's gonna get you see how this little the top part is kind of blocked off? You can you can now beat the shit out of him legally. And he lets you. So now that that's done, we go to the other dimension and um we bind him. Oh, well we switch over again. He does kind of switch around to different dimensions, so you don't wanna, you know hit the wrong one, he does do that, it's very annoying, he will he'll say the chaos people is something blah blah blah, 
he, you may be moved, and then that means he will move you to another dimension, and, you know, it's not a good thing to do, because you want to defeat the one that is, you know, just like that. So, yeah, just beat the shit out of him, and then see how his HP bar is done. Um, this is why I would say Will is, like, damage-gated. Okay, so he's gonna do that, I'm gonna have to iframe that. If, in order, if you don't have an iframe, what you could do is that when your Moonlight is more than halfway, you can just shift dimensions. When you shift dimensions, you get a little bit of an iframe, so make sure you are doing that. Um, so what I'm gonna do here, I don't have my iframe, I'm gonna shift dimensions, easy as that. And, yeah, so just, when his HP bar is kind of just, okay, I'm gonna switch again. He, it seems like he does do the attack in both dimensions, so just make sure you dodge that. Just dodge the balls, man. You can heal, like, you can literally heal in this mode, so if you get hit by a few things, that's fine, but not optimal. You, you know, dodge things if you want to. Alright, so he did push me away right there. So, you see the red eye. This means I'm in the correct dimension. If I'm in the other dimension, I will instantly die. Alright, so we're gonna attack the thing in the middle, we're gonna Dark Sight, this is so easy. Will is so much easier, part one, with Dark Sight. You don't really need it, you just have to dodge, and you can also iframe if you don't have Dark Sight. If you're not playing Explorer Thief or something, or like, oh, I don't know, Ho-Young or Kadena, I know those classes have Dark Sight, but yeah. So yeah, just stay in the middle, and then what I want to do is I want to, uh, Ring Swap. So now that my ring is available, I'm gonna go ahead and use Maple Goddess, I'm going to use, uh, my ring. And then I'm going to pop my Angelic Buster. Okay, actually this is something that I don't need to do. So now that his HP bar is you know, pretty low, I don't need to do that. I actually made a mistake. So now we're going to go to part two. So we're going to switch over to Healing Familiars. And yeah, my Healing Familiars are summoned. So welcome to part two. Cancel the sheet. One, two, three, get sucked in my sheets. Kore wa genji, so like a dream. Mazaru mix to no corner cream. Tsunagaru shikumi wa hen to hen. Hito to no kanke wa hen to hen. Gain ten to go, musubu ten to ten. Ato wa sense de kimaru ume no ume. Left ka right ka dengo sa you move the brick. Step up, step away, take a trick. Man, you gotta fight for your chick. Demo mo iru kara deki nai pick. Alright, so we need to talk about part two of Will. This is the part where you cannot heal with a potion manually. You need to have healing familiars to bypass this, which is really broken because GMS has this, but yeah, we should really be abusing this. There's no reason not to be abusing this with healing familiars. Obviously, KMS doesn't have familiars, so they can't do this, but we should abuse it because we have it, and it's imported from JMS. But anyways, I digress. So, in order to heal, you need to dodge the attacks, and your mule will regenerate very slowly, but once you have it more than halfway, you can actually heal. All you do is you press the NPC chat, and then you'll see like this yellow glowing uh, magic coming out of you, and then you can actually heal for about 5 seconds, you can use potions, and then you'll be fine. If you have iframes for this fight, you will absolutely, you know, be a lot better off and probably not die at all. Um, uh, if for some reason you have Breath of Divinity in Reg Server from uh, Marvel, whatever, Philo Books, uh, this is actually really helpful, but that costs like, what, $1,000 in Reg Server? So anyways, after you successfully dodge a decent amount of attacks, you can heal by pressing NPC chat, it gives you 5 seconds to heal, and then you really just want to be using this when you're low enough to be finished by like a small attack, so make sure you conserve your HP very, very conservatively. Uh, yeah. Alright, so for this part of Will, it's part two, right? So there's two bars of HP you can see, and it's not as complicated, it's just you have to dodge a lot more. So you see the spider legs coming out from the ground and from the sky. It goes in a pattern just similar to part one, so you really just want to be dodging that. Don't stand in the same spot. You have to be moving around pretty rhythmically, and you can't just be moving around like, uh, like crazy, but you have to really think about where you're moving. It's really hard to get down. So you see these little spider webs on the side of the map. This will actually one-shot you. I'm going to put it on the screen real quick. So yeah, these spider webs will one-shot you. If you are an explorer thief, you have dark sight, you step on it, it counts as like a monster basically. It's registered as a monster, it's coded as a monster. So if you step on it with dark sight, you won't have the touch damage. But if you do step on this without dark sight, or if you're not a class with dark sight, you will die. You will literally get one shot by the the, the little spider webs on the side of the map. Um, there's a lot of pellets. Of course, the pellets give you uh, moonlight reduction, so don't get hit by the red pellets. 
If you get hit by those, you won't be regenerating Moonlight. And remember, you want your Moonlight to be more than halfway, because if it's more than halfway, then you will be able to heal. And all you have to do is press the NPC chat. You see how I just pressed it? And it's, you know, it's going to let me heal. You see, the, the, whenever you have the yellow glow, that means you can heal with your actual potions besides your familiars. So when you don't have your potions up, you want to be dodging things and you want to be waiting for your familiars to heal you up. If you, you know, have to avoid attacking him, that's completely fine. And so how the segment test works is that you basically have to get him to that halfway point. Once you get him to the halfway point, it's going to say, the, mass, the mirror of lies reverses it. When the crack appears, face the attack. So when this message appears, you want to just um, hug the wall. And then when it doesn't, when the crack appears, you want to just jump into the spider legs. See what I'm doing? I'm just moving very, very forward, very, very quickly. It never appears in the same spot, so you want to keep moving forward. So you see how there's no crack on the floor. You have to really look closely, and now there's a crack on the floor. And then you keep going, you keep going, you move forward, you move forward, you keep on trooping. And then after that, you pass the test, and he says, now your chance. Attack Will while he's open, and bada boom, bada bang, you just burst him, you go ahead and buff up and beat the shit out of him. And again, after you bur after he binds himself, you know, with the red little uh, stuff coming out of him, you can bind him yourself. Like, you can bind him on top of that, is which which is what I did right there. I used Erda Nova, which is Erda Bind. Um, everybody gets this node, so make sure you have that if you don't have a class bind. So yeah, and then this repeats again for part two, and I think you basically have to do it like two or three times, uh, depending on if you fuck up or not. But um, see how I got him to the 0% uh, HP bar the second time, because there's only two uh, splits in this HP bar. So after that, just dodge and wait a little bit. There's a little bit of a timer. It's like two minutes in between each test. So yeah, just dodge everything. Make sure you don't step on the spider web on the corners. You see that little purple web on the ground. Do not step on that. He sends out little spiders. Jump over that. Very easy to dodge. But yeah, the spider leg attacks will really chunk you. If you aren't careful, you aren't really thinking about your movements. Please make sure you are thinking very critically about your movements. Don't just jump around like an idiot. Um, the way I'm jumping around right now is kind of uh, silly, but you can see I'm dodging everything. I do have uh, two iframes in my class. But yeah, there's a lot of things going on. Please do not be overwhelmed. Please make sure you practice. You have 20 practice runs per day in total for every single boss. Okay, you see how the uh, moonlight is halfway? I'm able to. Okay, so the crack right here. This is just a voiceover, by the way. Um, so yeah, you see the crack on the ground. Okay, I dodged that. But you see how I kind of just jumped onto that? Okay. So... You can kind of just flash jump. You see what I'm doing here? You can, you can kind of just flash jump into it. I don't recommend doing this, but if you're really good at flash jumping, you can do that. So you see I'm flash jumping into it? Yup. You see I'm flash jumping? Yup. Yup. Yep. As long as you hit the crack while the floor is cracked, or as, as, if, if you hit the fucking spider legs while you're cracked, then yeah. So I don't know how I passed that test. I did that very sloppily, but basically when the floor is cracked, you go into the spider legs. When it's not cracked, you don't go into the spider legs. So that was a lot. That was a lot. I know. Bear with me. So for the crack test, you really just want to stare. Like, I want your eyes to be bulging at the screen. Like, that is literally how I learned this boss in part two. I had to practice it so many times. I was like, okay, is the screen cracked? Is the, oh, sorry, is the floor cracked? And I was like, oh my god. Okay, the floor is cracked. Let me move forward into the cracks. Or sorry, the spider legs. So when the screen, or sorry, when the floor is cracked, right? You want to just jump into those spider legs. You jump into those spider legs, it never appears in the same exact spot. So every time you jump on the spider leg when the floor is cracked, you want to move forward a little bit, you can move backwards a little bit, you can move forward. Just get into the rhythm of it, get into the pattern of it. It's a whole pattern. You will get into it eventually. I promise you, when I first started doing Will, I was like, what the fuck? What is this boss? Why is this even a thing? It's 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 so fucking frustrating at first, but once you get it, I promise you, you will get it. Um, seriously, I like I'm making this video because this boss was so confusing to me when I first started learning it. It took me like a week to learn, honestly, and like I'm not ashamed to say that because this boss is fucking like it's not the worst boss ever. But once you learn it, it's like it's fine it's just so bizarre like the mechanics are so fucking bizarre does anyone else like agree with me like it is so weird to me like <laughs> that's why i just wanted to make a video like this so it's 
it, I feel like not alone, but yeah, it's just weird. But once you go, <laughs> seriously, once you get the crack thing down, like, see, I barely died to it. Like, I, I think I died once this entire thing. So, it, you can literally, like, I've done it deathless before. It's just, you eventually get it. You, I promise you, you will get it. But, uh, yeah, I just wanted to vent out my frustration. Sorry about um, that moment of vulner vulnerability. <laughs> But yeah, I think part two will is so bizarre. Um, part three will is pretty straightforward, so let's get into that. So immediately when you get into part three will, everything is just one HP bar, thank god. There is this, you kind of notice this green, like, circular aura around you. This is will poisoning you. It basically is really problematic in a party setting, but I'm assuming that you're trying to solo this boss, so if you're soloing, it's good to have poison. When you have poison, you are basically dealing double your damage. And when you, honestly, like, if you lack damage, you really just want to be doing this boss with poison. Like, if you don't have poison, don't even bother bursting. Just get the poison. Make sure he has the poison. And what you can do, there's a little secret strat you can do if you're really lazy. You could just kill yourself, basically, after you don't have the poison. And then now that I have the poison right here, you just kind of want to burst him down. You can also bind him. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go over the attacks. So there's basically two main attacks. He can push you around and stuff. It's really annoying. There are spider webs come, uh, coming around, and it's just like it kind of inches closer and closer to the screen. So the purpose of moonlight in this fight is to clear the spider webs. So you can clear up to two spider webs when you have the moonlight. You see how the moonlight bar is kind of rebuilding itself. You can clear the spider webs by going into the spider webs, jumping into it, you can clear up to two at the same time. So that's all you can do. But yeah, the spider webs will just be coming and coming and coming, and it's really, really, really hectic. But um, yeah, all you need to really know is that the green poison makes you deal double damage, and then I will go over the attacks right here.